What does year one for USC in the Big Ten look like? I'm going to go through some of the film on both the offensive and defensive side to show what USC might try and do this season. Now, USC has basically an entirely new roster. They only return one of their 14 players on this roster. Everybody else is a transfer or an incoming freshman. So there's a lot of question marks. And then you throw in that they have a new head coach in Eric Musselman. And there's just lots of questions of what's going to happen going all around. But based on their personnel and kind of what Musselman would like to run at Arkansas, one thing I'm pretty confident in is that incoming transfer St. Thomas is going to be a guy with the ball in his hands. So he's going to catch here. Very, very good rebounder on the defensive end. And I, I think a lot of Arkansas's offense is going to be simply just pick and roll because they have a lot of guys and we'll go through them in just the next few minutes. But you're going to see an example here. St. Thomas brings the ball up. Now he flows into a pick and roll, and Thomas is so good at just being able to create really any shot for himself or for others. Here, he can just kind of get downhill, get to this little mid-range step back, rise up over the defender, and, and just put it in. And I, I really do believe in St. Thomas and what he can do, and, and I think he's going to have a really, really big year for USC, and I think USC is also going to need a really, really big year from him. So we're going to go through another example here. It's going to be him up on the block. And this, is, I think, play also kind of shows his versatility of he's going to come up and ghost this screen. So he's not actually going to make any contact with the defender on ball. And so he's going to ghost and pop out to the three-point line. Now, nothing happens from that specifically, but he can be a guy that can screen and pop. Now he's going to catch it. And then immediately he's flowing into a pick and roll. And what really sets St. Thomas's skill part for me compared to a lot of these other like bigger wings especially on this team is he is a guy that can legitimately facilitate with usc not having a ton of true point guards i wouldn't be shocked to see st thomas being the one running point guard really for a decent bit of any part of any game right here sees he has two guys on him okay throw it out to my guy let him go and put up a three usc just they have a lot of these more like jumbo type wings and and guys that I think can some of them can create on ball some of them are just gonna be more of kind of floor spacers but incoming transfer Desmond Claude he is going to be somebody that can go and create so he's gonna end up with the ball right here and he struggled shooting from the perimeter but he's very very good at getting downhill and just kind of getting into the paint and creating that way I think Claude's more of a score than facilitator compared to Thomas uh, but again I mean you can see him coming off the screen right there and he just has really good physicality and a good, pretty, pretty good burst to be able to just get downhill, can absorb contact, can finish at the rim. I expect to see him involved in a lot of pick and rolls or even Thomas and Claude setting screens for one another. Now, if you want an individual film breakdown on all uh, 13 newcomers for USC, that will be linked in the description. I have that up on my YouTube as well. Clark Slager, he is probably the only true point guard I would consider on this entire USC roster. And so, I'm curious to see what his playing time is. Does USC go to a true point guard at, at the one, or do they opt for more just a jumbo sized lineup where it's, you know, St. Thomas potentially at the point, Claudia at the points, where you can play six foot five to six foot eight at basically every position? But Slager's here, gonna be able to come off of this screen. And he's just really quick and kind of crafty with the ball. He is able to create for others some, but he does a really good job of getting downhill, just using his speed. He's not going to be finishing above the rim, but good touch and just kind of a crafty finisher, I think, around the rim that should find him some success. Like, I think Musselman this offseason just did a good job of getting dudes that can come in and just create for themselves out of pick and roll. Um, out of just different actions and just be able to go get a shot and so then when you play in maybe a little bit free-flowing offense where you're setting a lot of screens or a continuity ball screen you're going to have multiple options at all times on the floor another one being Bryce Pope right here now Pope is probably we'll talk about him more in a minute because I think he's also going to be important for spacing the floor but he is somebody that showed he could run a lot of pick and rolls I'm interested to see it translating to the Big Ten level, but you're gonna see him here come off the screen. And he's somebody that wants to just get to the jumper, I'll think a lot. He can get downhill and finish at the rim, but I think especially against Big Ten defenses, where you're gonna see a lot of drop coverage like this defender has. If he has any sort of opening, he's gonna have the green light, he has a smooth form, and is really just gonna be able to kind of get to that mid-range jumper that Musselman's fine with. At Arkansas, Musselman has been fine allowing his guys to ISO. If he has dudes that can go just simply create a bucket, he's fine letting just getting them their ball in a good spot, letting them go to work one-on-one, -on -one, whether it be a mid-range, a drive, whatever it is. St. Thomas, and coming back to him, I, I think he's gonna be one of those guys. So you're gonna see him here. Northern Colorado is gonna run a pin down and 
St. Thomas is interesting because he can post up, he can run pick and roll, he can pick and pop. Like he can just do a little bit of everything. And so for ISOs, right, you can have him up here and try to break defenders down one on one. But you can also, especially if he has, if he's playing kind of more of a point guard type role and potentially has smaller guys on him, now you can throw him at the high post. And if this, say, this is like a 6 3 dude, he can just kind of go up, rise over, or he can just do something like this. He doesn't need a ton of separation to get off his shot. The shot translating is going to be the big swing skill, but it's simple offense, and sometimes that's what USC is going to do. I think going back to now Claude, like Thomas and Claude are going to be the two main guys, I believe, for USC. And they're both guys can run, pick, and roll, or just kind of self-create. And we're going to see an example of that here. So he's going to be looking for the post-touch. Nothing really happening. So now he's just going to get into a one-on-one -on -one and break defenders down off the dribble. Now, he's ran way, way more pick and roll than in terms of ISO last season. I think Thomas ran a bit more ISO um, relative to Claude, but I think both have the skill sets, especially him if he can get downhill into the paints. That's when a lot of good things are going to happen, like he does here, where now, I mean, look where he's ending up, just outside the restricted area, able to gather. And even here, it's still not like a clean shot, but good physicality, good body control, still able to go up and knock it down. What does the floor spacing kind of look like is going to be one of the bigger questions I have with USC's offense. You have these guys that can go and self-create, but if there isn't good spacing around them, sometimes that's going to make it even more difficult. So a guy like Shibuzo Agbo transferring from Boise State, I think his three-point shooting is going to be pretty invaluable. I mean, he was like a 44% three-point shooter or something like that. Able to knock down a lot of threes, and I think USC is going to badly need it, especially with him at his size, like six foot seven, still being able to get good looks and play good defense. So you're going to see here, Boise State is going to swing the ball. And I think what Agbo does very well also is like, even if he isn't necessarily like a movement shooter, he has the ability to just find the open spots. And that's going to be a common theme I talk about with shooters is, can you relocate to the correct spot? He's going to do that here. So as his guard gets a little bit of a drive, he's going to rotate over. And so now he is catching off the move, able to go up quick and just get, I mean, it's still a tough look, but the shooting he has is he's able to knock it down. And now we're back at Bryce Pope, who I mentioned earlier, can definitely create for himself off the dribble. But I think with what UCLA's kind of personnel is going to be, I assume he'll be in more of a off ball role catch and shoot, which he definitely mixed in a lot at UC San Diego. And so you're going to see here, um, UC San Diego is going to drive. There's going to be a cut and Pope's going to be out here and just basically waiting for the skip pass. He's going to slide up a bit, give his guy a passing angle to get it to him. Um, but just, I mean, you can see how deep he catches it and he's just going to catch immediately go up contested, able to knock it down. And, and I think his ability to shoot the ball well is going to be really, really important. I believe he was 37% on catch and shoot threes, but didn't shoot well on pull up threes. So maybe more of a pure off ball role will be good for him. One thing that has been pretty consistent for Muscleman teams is they want to run, they want to get out. A lot of athletic, lanky wings, and that is no different for from this USC team. I mean, there is a ton of guys listed from six foot five to six foot eight. Really, only one true point guard and only like two true centers, I would say, on the roster. Lots of dudes that can just kind of grab and go. St. Thomas, Claude, they can all just grab a boat, the board and go, or just kind of throw the ball up ahead. And that's what Arkansas is going to do. I mean, you're going to see off the rebound here. You have, you're going to always have guys kind of running. Usually you're going to, the two lead guys will probably be filling out towards here more. You'll have somebody rim running as well, somebody trailing. And so then they're willing to throw it up ahead, allow their athleticism to kind of come into play and just get easy, quick buckets that way. Switching to the defensive side of the ball, Arkansas struggled a lot last year, but that's kind of not the norm for them. Usually they are pretty, pretty to very good defensive team. So I'm going to go through some of the concepts I think they could see, but I am going to say with the personnel that USC has, like I could see them being kind of weird at times of even like tons of zones, just kind of odd lineups that force them to play funkier styles defensively. But one thing that they're going to do for sure, if a guy like jo uh, Josh Cohen, their center transfer is in, he's going to probably be in a deep drop. And so Arkansas, their drop coverage, usually their big man will be like way, way down here. Sometimes you'll see guys more up here and move their way back. They Arkansas, especially last year, just had their guys kind of there a lot. And so what they want to do is try to force the mid range, right? They trust their guards also to kind of get through stuff on the perimeter. And we'll talk about that more in a couple clips, but 
that's going to be something that's going to be pretty common, I think, and it allows Arkansas to also stay at home. They limit a lot of threes. There doesn't have to be as much help from the wing. So that's something I, I assume we see at some point for, our, for, for USC. Now, something I think we could see more with this uh, personnel that USC has is even a more aggressive style defensively, um, really getting into guards, hedging, like just trying to force a lot of turnovers with their length. You're going to look at an example here from Arkansas last year. So they're going to come off the screen. And so a hedge, I mean, this still is, this is more of a flat hedge where he's kind of staying just horizontal. Sometimes I could even see the hedges just like really trying to force the ball handler back, basically blitz them and trying to force a trap kind of over tucked in this corner, but something like this where, okay, now you have two on the ball. What this does do if they do run this is it throws off a little bit of their help side. Arkansas and Musselman don't always show a ton of help side. They stay home. They limit three pointers, which we'll talk about next clip, but that could kind of put their defense into rotation at times and allow stuff like that. But that's just one one off play right there. Like I think there is a lot of upside if Arkansas or if USC chooses to do this. Now, something that I think Arkansas consistently does do, and I just mentioned in the last clip, is they limit three-point attempts. They are pretty consistently towards the top in terms of allowing the fewest three-point attempts. Hot clock, you're trying to figure out something else. Now, here, they also do switch this guard to guard, and I think that's a big thing that USC will do. I expect them to probably switch, really, most things one through four, maybe with the five-man two, depending on personnel. And maybe if Slagert's in at the one, maybe he doesn't switch. But I expect a lot of switching, and that allows guards to stay up on the perimeter. And so they're going to live with kind of these drives. And Arkansas, in general, has length to be able to help protect at the rim. And they're, I mean, that's a tough floater right there. They're going to live with those types of shots. Now, last year, Arkansas, and, and this has been a, for a couple seasons, they allow a lot of shots at the rim, but they do a good job of defending. They trust their bigs to be able to help protect the rim. Now, USC... I don't know if they have as many natural just kind of rim deterrence as maybe Arkansas has had, but guys like Cohen, uh, St. Thomas even, like those guys I think can do it to a degree. So we're going to look at a play here of LSU against Arkansas. You're going to see them um, first things, like just eventually going to get to this pick and roll. You're going to go, they went under, Arkansas did. And really they just like, I mean, you can see here, they, they try to keep it two on two. Um, they, they want to kind of stay out on the perimeter, limit threes if they can, because they trust their guys. And so right there, they trust, hey, he's going to be able to help protect the rim right there. And that's exactly what he does. And I think USC like will probably take a lot of that as well. And another thing that I think Arkansas did that USC will as well is just really applying pressure in the backcourt with their guards, trying to force a lot of turnovers. Like if their struggle is going to be protecting the rim because maybe they don't have as many natural shot blockers USC did or will have, they got to kind of make up for it on the perimeter and being able to apply a lot of pressure. So, I mean, even there, just some token pressure in the backcourt while they're bringing it up. Ball's going to swing. You're going to see this immediate switch right here. It's another thing, I like I said, I think USC will go to at some point a good a bit. Ball's now staying out on the perimeter. 15 seconds left. Ball now getting up to the top. And this right here of just trusting their guards to kind of get through. I mean, you're going to see there is definitely, it's not like Arkansas played no help and USC will play no help, but they don't, they would like to limit it as much as possible and just trust that their guards can create pressure. Their length can cause disruptions and USC, I think is going to do a lot of that as well. If you enjoyed, please like, and subscribe and click here for even more USC preview contents.